What's up everyone? Today, if you've seen the thumbnail, you can probably already guess, but we are actually finally getting around to rebuilding the IRS 8.8 .8 out of the 99 Cobra IRS suspension I'm putting in the Drift Mustang. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a little while, I've been waiting on all these parts. I have 373 gears, along with new crush washer, new pinion nut. I have a 31 spline 88 open diff we're going to weld to be shut because it's $25 instead of $200 because the spool is $200 and they achieve the same thing. The spool is just a touch lighter. Six to one half does the other. I'm going to have enough horsepower. It's not going to be a, an issue at all. Uh, we also have for Cobra specific IRS because most 88s don't have needle bearings here with the uh, outer seal for the axle where the axle slides in. Uh, most of them just have the inner bearing on the carrier and spine into the carrier have the outer axle bearing. We have said needle straight bearings and said outer seals. Along with, of course, marking compound, Loctite, uh, GT500 uh, pinion bearings, shims, new bolts, you know, you name it, fluid. Now, they also did throw in some Ford friction modifier. I'm not gonna need it, but I'm gonna keep it around and I'm about to tell you why. But overall, should be fairly easy. The only thing's picture here that I might need, not 100% sure, is a pinion seal saver. It depends on how the pinion is worn on the actual 8.8. We'll take a look. It was leaking when I pulled it out. I think I might need it, but I erred not to get it just for the moment being because I wasn't 100% sure. So, to uh, get into it, we're going to start off by welding the 8.8 31 spline center section instead of just go ahead and pulling that apart yet just because I want to have everything else ready to go in so I'm not sitting there with it apart possible losing parts and stuff just peace of mind thing but essentially if you look I have two uh I'm an idiot when I went to the junkyard to pull these because if you didn't know 8.8 .8 rears which is what the Cobra IRS 8.8 .8 center section uses which is the same same exact thing as the solid rear axles except they have a little bit of a different groove right here on the inner lip not that big a deal to me uh i'm just not gonna run it without that spline the axle nuts what retains it anyways you could just pop it out by easily pulling on it it's more so if something comes loose it's a safety thing most people don't use it because in order to get a irs center section that has that it's extremely expensive like the only one i could find was a $800 I think it was crazy pricing and of course if you run a spool then there's nothing for it to clip into anyways not that big a deal back to what I was saying because I'm rambling uh, I have two this one if you look is a limited slip differential you can see the clutch packs there clutch packs there clutch packs there this one obviously is not the 88 section center section was 28 spline up until I want to say 2011 or it might have been the O. Somewhere in the S197 range, they swap, stopped the uh, Mustang GT88 being 28 spline, they went to 31 spline. Although the Explorers never got the 28 spline. The 28 spline necks down on the axle to where it goes in, and they're known to crack there under high horsepower or high stress. I actually broke one axle doing this. It's fluke chance, nine times out of 10, if you're drifting under five, 600 horsepower, you're never gonna be at risk of breaking an axle like that. But I had swapped a 31 spline. Now, on the Cobras, 99 and 01, if I might be wrong on that, but I know 99 for sure, like the one I have here, used 28 spline axles. And then 02 through 04, they are 31 spline on the inner side where it goes into there. It's still 28 on the hub all the way through. Apparently what was happening is a 28 spline were break right here at the housing because apparently just the spine wasn't strong enough that they had to go a higher count because they could go to a higher thickness. Uh, that's what the, why the spine changes. It's the same pattern, just more splines means thicker. Uh, so what I went ahead and did, instead of buying a 31 spine spool for like 200 bucks from like Strange, I went to the junkyard. For $25, I pulled these bad boys out. They are 31 spline. They both work, like I said, one's limited slip, one's not limited slip. The problem is when you're welding these, on a solid rear axle car, if you don't have, if these clutch packs are worn out, which they are known to do, I know multiple people that upgrade and put the carbon clutches in and wear it out within a couple months, 
just because they're known to do that. Their clutch style, they wear out. They also don't like high heat. They also wear out quicker when they get hot, and of course you're not running a cooler nine times out of ten. But essentially, when you weld a, th uh, a, a uh, solid rear axle with the clutches, if those aren't shimmed right, the axle can actually have play because as those clutches wear out, they get thinner. And the only thing that stops the axle from playing in and out is the C-clip against the, the C-clip against the inner spline here, against the clutches. In my application, obviously that wouldn't matter, but there is a second reason I do not like using solid, uh, limited slip differentials in 8.8s that are to weld. Because if you look right here, very close, this spider gear sits solely on a clutch. It does not touch the housing anywhere. There's actually a gap I'd have to bridge if I wanted to make it touch. Right? So your two main points of contact for the, the welded is the spider gears on the outer edge, which is fine and dandy. I know multiple people that have no issues with that. But in an application that will potentially see high horsepower, on a solid rear axle open diff, it actually is just sitting against the housing because there are no clutches for it to sit against. So when you weld it, you weld four points of contact to the housing instead of two like over here. I grabbed this one on accident. I hit my head really hard and it was hot. I wasn't paying attention. I saw it was a Ford Explorer Sport, which is nine times out of 10 an open diff. Some of them came limited slip. So I just kind of grabbed it and moved on with my day. That was a mistake. So uh, yeah, and that's why I have two because I had to go back and grab another one. Luckily, I ended up paying for the second one. I helped a buddy take an engine back. He got so much credit. He was just like, I, I got you. So what we're gonna start off by is of course cleaning this off, getting it set up in here so we can go ahead and weld it. When we get to clean it off, we get to clean it with fire. So, got it set out here on the asphalt. Got my main man, brake clean, and my torch. So I'll clean this sucker off. Sheboygan. Get her nice and cozy, let her, let her bake. So, both bottom and top is done. You can see I also did down in the corners here where the gears meet and the inside. This comes apart. There is a serious fucking issue. Uh, I went ahead and took the dowel out and uh, despite having it in, it was a lot easier to clean this hole out. I still had to clean it out to get it to slide in and out nicely. Not so important for IRS cars, but for uh, solder axle cars, you definitely want to make sure this can slide in and out freely so it's easy to get into the car so you can get your seat clips. Uh, what I went ahead and did is I took a massive ass drill bit. Uh, I don't remember the exact size on it right now. I'll put it right here on the screen. And then I also have a belt sander for the compressor. And I milled this down on the, no, I sanded it down on the sand belt. And then I also walled the holes out. What happens is despite them being through, it can expands, it kind of shifts ever so slightly, basically making it so that doesn't want to go in. So now that we're done with this for the moment, uh, we don't really need to clean it up or anything. It's just going to kind of sit here and live. We're going to start pulling this apart to get it ready to receive all these dead parts. Uh, I might even make a little jig for it to sit.
I'm absolutely fucking stupid. What you've seen me been struggling with the slide hammer on this side of the differential with is because I didn't look closely at these little spline bearings that I have replacement for. I thought I pushed out the inner part. I pushed the whole thing out. I've been trying to push out the actual center housing for it. Like a fucking idiot. I'm goddamn retarded. Like, big time turbo retarded. Holy shit. I'm stupid. All right, finally back. Got the tools I'm missing. We're gonna start with this flange here. Basically, if you see there's a groove on the flange surface, this is what I think was causing the oil leak out of the front of the pinion. Went ahead, got a repair sleeve, and spending a, instead of spending $150 for a whole new flange, basically comes with this, this little cap. Set it on there, whack it down. And of course it doesn't work correctly. That was great, I just broke it. Seeing I'm stuck waiting on parts, figure I'd start working on some other stuff with this project. Which is getting the ring and pinion set. Now I already took my uh, old pinion, pulled the bearing off of it, and got the washer from underneath it. It's gonna slip on there, just like that. I'm gonna grab our new pinion bearing, which is this. We need. Press it on. Alright. So, we're going to take our old one. Washer there. Press it on real quick. Alright. It's been a couple days. I finally have a flange that doesn't have a grease groove that fits correctly. So we can finally put this together. Here comes the fun. I'm going to take... My gear here. I'm gonna put a little bit of gear oil in it. All right. Just kind of get it so it's not running dry. Set that in there. I'm gonna set our oil slinger in. Next up, we're going to take our seal, set it on kind of nicely. Puppy dog in the background. Set our driver in there. We're going to ow. Drive the seal in. Beautiful. The seal is fully driven. Then our pinion itself. You saw me press the bearing on it, so we're all pressed, ready to go there. All right. So our nut, a crush washer. First things first. Let's get some gear oil here. Kind of lather it up. Set our crush washer on. Then, pick the differential over. I'm gonna slide it in. While holding it on, put I'm also supposed to put a little bit of gear oil on the threads, apparently. Put into the Ford manual. So just give those a little bit of a grease. Could grease the outside of that seal just a little bit. Uh, holding this in there because it's not fully pulled through yet. We're gonna kind of set that together. And then Don't 
double check that that lines up right. I think it's good. Apparently it's... There we go. If we tighten it down. Right. See, it started now, but what we gotta do next Pry bar. So I want to rotate this way. We use the pry bar to stop it from spinning while we tighten it down. So far. Still a lot of play. I'll keep it going. Now the goal is to get it so there's no play like this up and down, and that there's a uh, 18 to 29 foot pounds, of, uh, inch pounds of resistance, and I'll show you what that looks like. Take our half inch socket. The goal is to see how much rotational resistance there is. Right now there is, by rotational resistance, it's basically when, you, when you're turning it, how many inch pounds of resistance does it say? Right now it says there's a roughly three and a half. So we're gonna go a little bit more. We want 18 to 29. Just go a little bit at a time. So, let's see what we want to see. Getting there. We're up to like seven. We're like 24 inch pounds there. I'm gonna back this off, swap that crush washer out and get this right. It's thinner, goes on that side. Yeah. It's the next day, it's almost nighttime. I've been fighting this all day, but I finally got it. Nice crescent shaped moon. It's a little high on the wheel, but it's a little high on this side, but I don't feel like fucking with it anymore. I'm ready to get this thing together and get it mounted in the suspension so I can be done with this because I want to get it in the car so the car is a roller. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, clean this up. I'm gonna bring all the should be bolts are removed. You can see my spindle thing. <laughs> yeah, everything is perfect. So fun. RTV time.
So, with the differential being fully complete, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, probably a shorter one, maybe even really short. Not sure. I have a lot of videos to edit. I have a very big backlog. But, uh, yeah. So, the next video you'll see after this will be getting that in the car or making the car a roller, including with the front suspension. So, look forward to that coming your way. Till then, had a great time. Like, let me know how I'm doing down below in the comments. Subscribe if you like the content. I'll catch you all in the next one.